symbol of excellence in sports entertainment. Hello and welcome to Arn. This is Paul Bromwell. And today I'm joined by the Hall of Famer, the founder of the Four Horsemen, the creator of the Spine Buster, the 1A a tag team wrestlers, our television champion, and the man that I call my tag team partner. He is the enforcer. He's double A. He's Arn Anderson. Arn, happy new year, my friend. How are you this week? Is it already 2024? Not quite yet. Not quite yet, but it will be in about another day or two. It'll be rolling over that calendar. It'll be 2024. And uh, my goodness, where did 2023 go? Yeah, it flew by. Can I, before we get officially started, can I show you something that I'm really proud of? Yeah, I want you to, yeah. Is it that pickle that you told me you were going to go grab? No. Okay. Nope. What is that? That's down the hatch. This okay. Is, <laughs> this is Tops Trading Cards. Oh, nice. And this is what it's going to look like. Oh, my goodness. What is this? All in the family. My son and I sharing the tops trading card. How cool is that? Arn, that's bigger than a trading card. That's like an, and, and is that, that's a print. Now, where are we going to be able to buy that? Um, I don't know if this will be available. But I think it was, this was like a gift that the guy sent from tops. For me, but it may be. It would make sense too, right? Yeah, okay. it's, it's, it's this, Terry this Weaver in our chat said that's that's what they call a trading page. But okay. It's huge. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, it's coming out in twenty twenty four. It's not out yet, but they okay. kind of this is like the prototype, and uh, I'm very proud of that. It's beautiful, Arn. That is a beautiful piece, and if it's something that you're able to uh, take, take to my grave. Well, not only that, but if it's something that they end up deciding to reproduce, and you talk about an unbelievable piece to have autographed by you and Brock. Be a nice collector's item for folks. Yeah, that is that is gorgeous. Uh, wow. Very nice. So if those of you that are listening only, you need to go over to our YouTube page right now and uh, subscribe, uh, first of all, to the Arn Show. But just to check out that beauty, especially if that's just something that's only for you, I don't know... Hopefully it's not. Hopefully that's something that's open for the rest of us to purchase because that is an absolutely gorgeous piece. Makes perfect sense. Really good work for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can see Amy clamoring to the computer to find it right now on Google. <laughs> well, let's talk about another piece of merchandise that's about to come out or, uh, you know, as we stated last week, could be shipping. Some of you may have received this by the time this episode drops. And that is Arn Anderson. My life is wrestling's enforcer. Arn, you said it last week. You finally got in the boat. You broke out the oars. Your back's all stretched out. And it's here in the U.S. and it's starting to ship. And we are so excited for you, my friend. Thank you very much. I'm excited as well. It's. Uh, I just hope everybody enjoys it. When they're done, they go, damn, that was cool. I, was, I wasn't expecting that. Well, you know what? I'll, um, I'll challenge our, our listeners here. And by the way, we also have our ad free show family back with us once again for this episode. When you get it, if you enjoy it, can you please rate and review it on all the places where like Amazon and some of these other places, give it that five star feedback and give it those nice comments. And let's do, uh, you know, something ar nice, our part to recognize Arn and everybody, Dirk Manning and his team that have put the effort into this. Um, I cannot wait to see it. I know there's stories that you mentioned that have never been uh, shared before. There was the opportunity for some folks to be added to the graphic novel for certain tier levels. So I'm excited to see all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, like our friends, you know, that are have cameos in the comic book. That's forever. Yeah. That's forever. How cool is that? Way cool. Yeah. Big yeah. time. Yes. Amy, I know you're in it. And uh, so there it's, it's really going to be great. I'm looking forward to seeing it. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll show some merch a little bit later in the show. Don't let me forget arm because the merch, by the way, has been flying off the shelves. Have you noticed coming into the Christmas season? And I want to thank you all for that, but you can still get a lot of this new merch. I'm wearing the, uh, again, my Carolina blue sweatshirt 
Arn's got a nice t-shirt on there as well. Check it out. Box of gimmicks. We mentioned it last week. He owns the four horsemen trademark. Get you one of these jackets. It's it's jacket weather right now. It's embroidered. That is an embroidered logo on the back of that satin bomber jacket. That, that this Arn and your thought. And when you got this, you said, buddy, this is just like the one I wore back in the day. Quality work. 100% quality work. And hey, go to, you know, not only Box of Gimmicks, go to the Horseman store. It's, That's the store at Box of Gimmicks. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's uh, it's easy to find and there's something in there for everybody. There is. There is. During Christmas season, we had Christmas ornaments. They could buy a Christmas ornament arm with your face on it. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> they had, they no, get that, that paper. That's a legitimate Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy, so good. Um, and uh, I love it. So let's get started. And as I said, we're going to our social media pages for all these questions. And here we go. This is part two. And up first, we have the hockey freak with a food question Do you like any food dishes with duck in it? No. He's out on duck, hockey freak. Not a duck guy. Not a duck guy. All right. I tasted duck somewhere sometime in the past, and it had a really wild taste to me. Just to yeah, me. yeah, like that. I got like kind of that. Uh, it's like deer uh, meat. I don't, yeah. You know, you can't compare deer meat, I'm sorry, to beef. It's mm. got that wild wang to the it. The gamey taste. Check. I do like a good deer bologna. Have you ever had deer bologna where they process it and it's got a little sweet flavor to it? Have you ever had deer bologna? No, sir. Okay, we'll move on. I like Brian's bologna, thick. Brian, Brian. Brian's. Okay. Can't, can't find that everywhere. Okay. When, when Dixie. Okay. Do you, how do you like it? Do you like it with uh, on a sandwich with? Mayo, white bread, fresh. One piece of lettuce. Okay. No cheese, guys. You heard it. Ted Ted Dahlman's up next. Has Arn ever eaten at a Brahms ice cream burger restaurant in Oklahoma or surrounding states? It's a family-owned company with all ingredients sourced from the family farm, and no Brahms location is more than eight hours from the farm. Have you ever eaten at a Brahms? I think I've seen them. Don't they put like a big ice cream cone out front? Is that possible for their advertisement? Uh, I have no idea. Um, but you know what? If one of our folks watching live wants to hit me in the comments and let me know if they Google Brahms, B-R-A-U-M apostrophe S ice cream and burgers in Oklahoma. And let me know if you see a big old ice cream out there, that would be helpful. But I have no idea, Arm. So if that's what, that's my only memory of it. I, okay. don't think, I don't think I've ate there. All right. Well, we'll figure it out. Mad dog is up next and he's interested to know about your initial thoughts on sting in WCW. Did you believe once he got there that he could eventually be the face of WCW? Yep. hundred uh, percent. Sting knew the value of cosmetics in our business. And, uh, when he came to Crockett, he had already started tanning. I mean, he's a California guy. He had been tanning probably his whole life. He had that haircut. I mean, he had the scorpion look and it matched his work and it matched who he was probably internally. Uh, and he just looked like a star coming out of the shoot. Every single time he just, he looked like, wow, that guy looks cool. He was a superhero. And the painted face, right? Everybody's like, well, the road warriors, right? But he had a spin on it with the blonde crew cut and the colorful boots and everything to, to give it enough of it. That was, he made it his own. He, he stood alone with, with his look. Color contoured. Yes. All of it. Everything matched. Everything looked good. When he went to like signings and stuff, and uh, they were outside of the the ring setting. I mean, he'd have on like a turquoise leather outfit to wear. When he walked in the room, you just went, "Jesus Christ, who was that?" I mean, he right. looked like somebody every time he left the house. Mm. 
And it was, I want to, I don't want to say exotic, but it was. It's an exotic look. Everything. I mean, he glowed in the dark. My nickname for him was Glow Worm. <laughs> I thought you were going to say neon, but I like Glow Worm better. <laughs> you know, and I, I would substitute that for Lightning Bug, you know, mm. because he walked in the room and he just lit the place up. I've just had the second person ask, so I have to. Sting's last match, Greensboro. Are you going to be there? Going to watch it? Any any ideas right now? It's in March. I'll definitely be watching it. There you well, go. I'm not, you know, that I'll definitely be watching. One, one way or the other, you're going to be checking it out. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. All right. I heard they sold 10,000 tickets the first day. So you think people want to see what's going on with oh, Sting? Yeah. Yes. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. And at Greensboro couldn't be a, there couldn't be a better town. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's all the stars are aligned for that one. Uh, by the way, our research guy, Andrew Hermes, who's here watching with us did say you're correct. Ice cream cone out front of that burger joint. So what I've done is probably been barreling past it on my way to the building <laughs> and looked over and went, damn, man, we should stop in there and get an ice cream cone. Oh, we ain't got time. Right. Keep right. going. Keep going, man. But it was fleeting. And I remember that catching your attention. If I remember that, that's good marketing. And seriously, though, would you really want to have that dairy before you climbed into the ring? Probably not a good idea. So you made the right. Oh, call. no. This would be strictly if I was doing the, the producer gig. Oh, yeah. Here you As go. a wrestler, I couldn't eat five hours before wrestling. I had such a slow metabolism. To this day, I still have one. That's part of the reason I'm a tub of shit. <laughs> Let's just call it like it is. Yeah. But back then, I couldn't, you know, I was just, I had a five hour window. If I was going to be figuring to be in the ring at, oh, I'll say 9 30, I wouldn't eat. God, I wouldn't eat past four o'clock, probably 4 30. And even then, probably something light. Something light. Always. Yep. Yeah. Uh, KS tweeted and said, what was your favorite angle that you ever worked in, uh, in WCW? Do you have memories of say, man, that, that one was just a, a home run for me. Angle WCW. I guess you go back to Crockett. It's all under that umbrella Crockett days or. Um, WCW. yeah, the, the one that scared me to death, but pulled out every raw emotion you can hope for being a wrestler in the business. When, when flair turned on dusty and the Omni. Oh yes. In that cage. And we had a real for real riot trying to get out of that cage and get back to the locker room. I've never felt raw emotion and terror like I felt that night. It took 20 minutes to get back to the, back to the locker room. We hear that story and it's like re really 20 minutes, but you, but yes, 20 minutes to fight through that crowd. Well, they, it blows my mind. There were a uh, hundred people trying to prevent us from taking it one step in that direction. And 10 Atlanta cops, I would estimate 10, had they not been there to beat those people back and create a slow path that killed us. I love to go back and watch. Thank God for for the network and the Peacock and the all that, because that stuff can now live on for us to watch when we want. We can go pull up those old clips, those highlight reels of Jim Crockett promotions, and that's still one of those angles. That whole build up time, that whole time period, watching the build up. It's just everything because for, for, as far as where I was at my, as an, a, as a fandom, as a kid, so good. Love that story. Oh, it was, it was as real as real gets. Yeah. I'm not, I'm telling you when, when the rock and roll express who were used on top at that time, Terry Taylor and, some couple of other guys, when they came down and started climbing that cage and we started knocking them off and that audience saw that nobody's going to save him. It went to a different level. Mm -hmm. 
Darren Staley, who's with us in the ch chat, said, I was lucky enough to be at those mid-80s Jim Crocker promotions shows, and it was effing insane just, just to be there. Because it was raw emotion. It was real good versus evil. This team hated this team's guts. And you knew who was on whose team and who the alliances were, and it was good versus evil, and it was more so than using weapons and big bumps and falling out of the ceiling and all that. It was two guys beating the crap out of each other. Darren said, I would challenge and say rock and roll pop, rock and roll express pop at that time, probably beat the road warrior pop at that time. That's how popular they were. Oh, it was the shrill kids, the little yes. girls. It was a different, I mean, the road warriors when they're, there's hit, it was like, Ooh, when the rock and roll, hit every teenage girl, every <laughs> grown, every grandfather, grandmother, right? you name it. Everybody loved the rock and roll express. And it was, it was, it was insane. As you were describing the whole scene there that went, went down, Amy chimes in and says, also don't forget someone stabbed Oli through that whole thing. This was a different night. Was that a different night? Okay. Yeah, there yeah, yeah. Only got cut across the chest. But I mean, I guess during that era is what she's trying to oh, say. Oh yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. She's absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what, Amy? It was a sixty-nine-year-old man that pulled that knife out and cut Oli across the chest. Oh, my goodness. I mean, sixty-nine-year-old man. Cornet used to try to get murdered. I mean, people try to kill him. Oh God Almighty! Yeah, I mean, Cornet must have hit. God, countless people with that tennis racket just to save his own ass. Because, hey, when the, rock, the Midnight Express got more heat, that unit, than anybody I've ever seen. And it was because Cornette was floating around, and when things looked like his team were fixing to get beat, he had swat one of those guys with that tennis racket. Oh, and yeah. man, the volume would go through the roof. The heat would go through the roof. That yeah. loaded tennis racket. Those people were coming over the rail and Jimmy was having to fight them off till the cops could get there. And I mean, it was serious heat. Yeah. As Darren said, it's just too bad. Y'all just had to be there. It was like anything he, he experienced and Arn, you got to be at center of all that, man. What a great oh. time. I have led an enchanted life. There is nothing negative, you know, even with the leftover injuries and, the neck and the back and the things I, you know, you carry with you, I guess, through the rest of your old age. But, man, I have led an enchanted life. I have had more emotion thrust on me and more emotion come out of me that I didn't know was there in, in a wrestling match. Terry said, well, we, Terry Weaver said, we love hearing about it. Man, we do, especially because – you have such fond memories. And when you tell the stories, we can, it's like, we're there with you again, feeling it. I mean, it just, it was everything I expected when I was an eight year old kid. And I thought, God, I want to do that so badly, but you know, you, it's just a pipe dream back then, but to actually go through that curtain and see people trying to get to you and you've just walked through the curtain. You had not even had a match yet and trying to kill you before you can even get to the ring. It's really nothing like it. God, the, the, the time of wrestling bef before kayfabe was killed and all that stuff was the best because we believed and it was raw emotion and people hated you. They hated your guts. They hated Tully. They it, hated the horseman. Uh, yeah. They, I mean, they had their team. Dusty, yeah. rock and roll, Magnum, they had their team, and we were the other team. And every town you went to, that was the home team. Mm. And uh, it just, man, it was uh, just special. I'm going to watch some Crockett tonight when we're done recording. That's it. I'm going. I'm going. I'm, I want to relive some of this. We want to pause this episode of Arn to talk to you about something Arn and I are very passionate about. And that's sleep quality. And if you're waking up too hot or too cold, we highly recommend you check out Miracle Maid's bed sheets. 
They're inspired by NASA. Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. Did you know that traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat? That's freaking gross. That can lead to acne, allergies, and stuffy noses, and it's just, that's awful. Nobody wants that. Miracle Made offers a whole line of self-cleaning, eco-friendly bedding, such as sheets, pillowcases, and comforters, and it prevents 99% of bacteria and requires three times less laundry. The self-cooling properties for better quality sleep are where it's at. They use silver-infused fabrics, as I said, inspired by NASA. And uh, the Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long. You've heard Arn and I talk about it before. We like it cold and dark in the rooms. That's how the horsemen liked it after they were done a busy night. And that's how you'll enjoy it too. And you can get it right here. Again, very clean, bacteria free. So go to trymiracle.com slash Arn to try Miracle Made sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code ARN at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20% off. Listen, Miracle is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you're gonna get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made right now. Go to trymiracle.com slash ARN and use the code ARN to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash ARN and treat yourself to a great night's sleep. And we want to thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode of The ARN Show. Gabriel, we could talk about this all all show. Gabriel Ricard says, "What are your, if you have them, five favorite horror movies?" Well, number one stands alone, and it it, it messed me up. Exorcist. Okay. I I saw that out in Washington State when I was fifteen years old. I had rode out there with my, or had flown out there with my cousin. And he was in the army. He was going to take his 30 day leave in Spokane, Washington. And I went out with him and we were going to buy a car for him and drive back. So we went to downtown Seattle and it was the exorcist. And there was like two other people. And it was one of these huge, huge, uh, theaters with the with the big drapes like the wine colored drapes almost like a funeral home and buddy that thing came on and when that chick's head spun around and she spit that damn pea green soup (laughs) all over the priest i flipped i ran back to the lobby i refused you were done you're out i refused and uh we got back home and uh I sat up on the dryer because the the washer and dryer room had a light you could cut on. And I sat on the dryer. I couldn't go to bed. I couldn't lay down in the bed after seeing it. It messed me up, boy. Was that it for horror movies for you? That's such a precedent. I mean, it's just the omen was pretty heavy. Did you ever finish the whole movie? Andrew put it in the chat. Did you ever finish it? Uh, Yes, but it, but it, it, all it did was just mess me up again. Oh, it, so you relived it again. I mean, it was just, I just, I finished watching it because I couldn't find anybody that had went to the movie to tell me what happened after when I ran out. So I had no other choice but to see the rest of it. Uh, because there wasn't like, okay, you can, let's pull it up on YouTube or whatever the deal is. Let's see the finish to the movie. Back then, it was you either sat in there and watched the movie or you didn't. Yeah. Uh, the Omen was heavy duty. It okay. Sca- it scared the piss out of me. Um, I think you probably. What was the. Oh, a uh, pet cemetery was pretty creepy. Did you ever get into the Friday the 13th or Halloween's or Nightmare on Elm Street genre of movies? Um, those I could grasp were 
okay, they're just making a movie. When the other one, when you start intervening with priests. Right. And the religious side of things. And you bring God into it. Yes. It went into a whole nother realm for me. I'm with you. I know what you're saying. Now it's just not a movie, man. They're talking about God. Spiritual beings. The God and the devil. Right. You know? Right. Now it's got a whole different twist. Yep. All right, let's get back to some wrestling before we now scare ourselves shitless here. Uh, Sean Brown is interested to know if you have any good stories about the exotic Adrian Street uh, as he was one of Sean's wrestling idols. Does he know how bad he was? Like badass? Kick yeah, ass? That, I'm sure he was. He, Like he said, that was one of his idols. So, It's a shooter. Ooh. In our business, that means they will stretch your ass from here to there. And nothing you can do about it, especially having that gimmick that he had, you know, it just made it even worse. He would kiss guys and the guys would get pissed, literally get pissed in the ring. And then he would stretch them. So (laughs) what are they going to do about it? Yeah. Rather have him kiss you or stretch you. Yeah. And and then when he's done stretching you, he'll kiss you again and tell you you're going to like it. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, he had a hell of a gimmick. Uh, he was down in Pensacola a couple of shots while I was there for the 14 months that I was there. I think he worked once or twice, but gentleman, perfect gentleman all the way, but had a hell of a gimmick and uh, good, really good. Good. Phantom Zone wrote, hi, Arn. I met you in Roanoke, Virginia last August at our Comic-Con War Games. There's one rule I would change. We all know it's one-on-one for five minutes. Uh, then each side adds a man every two minutes thereafter. When the last man enters, it's submit or surrender. I would change the last period to a five-minute round, then go to submit or surrender. What do you think? Could work. Um now, when we started the war games from the first ones on, it was five minutes. And then I think the times were four minutes. Okay. Yeah. So you had a little fuller segment with each. When you added a new guy, it had a new complete flavor to it. Four minutes feels like it, it was a little better. So the other one was two. Yes. Every two minutes thereafter. Seems like that flew. Yeah. That would have flown by, I think. Yeah. Uh, Zeus asks, why did Arn stop using the second turnbuckle spine buster? The second turnbuckle spine buster. Is he sure not gourd, gourd buster? Maybe, but I'm trying to think of the second turnbuckle spot. Would you? No, there wasn't. There's was no way to do that. I, I know you weren't a fan of climbing the ropes at all, so. No, we we did do one where I would sit up on the top rope. Tully would bear hug a guy and feed him up to me. Okay. I would hook him and step off and and gourd buster him. Gourd buster. Maybe that's what he's thinking about. Okay. And and so did you just guys decide to sh- go away from that one day or? Well, it was just too much risk on my knees. Gotcha. You know, because you got to take the, you got to absorb the the bump on your knees or you kill the guy. Right. It's like, what did Hogan say? If he would have realized what he was doing with the leg drop to his body, that whole career, he would have either done the bear hug or the sleeper. That's his name maneuver. And he could have got away with it. Yeah. Piper got away with a sleeper. Good call. Uh, cry court C R I C O U R T says at what age did your uh, kids arm become smartened up to how their dad's job really was and how it really worked? Um, Brock in particular, I don't remember Barrett. Um, Barrett really wasn't into it too much, to be honest okay. with you. Uh, but Brock was probably 17. 17. <laughs> I never smartened him up. Wow. You are something else. I love it though. Well, and, uh, the thing that really pissed him off was he was talking about somehow we got on the, uh, 
we got on the subject of the Undertaker and Kane, and we're talking about, I don't know if he saw them arrive separately or leave separately or something. He was talking about, he just said, well, Dad, don't they ride together? And I said, I don't know, son. Probably maybe they didn't ride to this time. He says, well, they're brothers, ain't they? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. He thought they were brothers still. And I went, no, Mark, they're, they're not brothers. And he went off. You called him Mark? <laughs> oh, yes. Man. I mean, he got, it was like when he said, you know, they're, it's like they're brothers. They should be riding together. That just, right. Right. He's like, come yeah. on, dad. They're brothers in a real world. That would be the case. Yeah, they would right. be riding together. <clears throat> so, and he is probably senior in high school. Maybe. I don't know. Was that around the age where that you finally told him that Santa wasn't real too? Or, I mean, come on, Arn. Were you that dad? <laughs> they, my kids were smart enough. They didn't want me to cost. They wanted to get all of Santa's gifts. <laughs> they weren't going to say, Hey, this is all bullshit. They right. Just, Cause they knew I liked to play Santa and you know, and, and you know what? I'm sure you did a great job at that playing Santa. Did you ever put a red suit on and do the whole thing or? Yeah. And they shut all over it. I was, I went out on the deck at the other house and, we're having a Christmas party and I came up to like the, the, the sliding glass door on the back and I stepped up in there. And, <laughs> oh gosh. One of the kids just came over and opened the door and, and it was, uh, I can't remember if it was, I think it was Barrett and he just went, Oh, Hey dad but I had the full Santa suit on Oh, the whole deal, man. That's yeah. so cool that you would at least want to do that for your kids. Nobody sold it. Right. Right. They all know it was you. And, but as long as you could get away with the milk and cookie gimmick the night before, that's all you cared about. That, that was Barrett. You know, he, he, he just blew the cover on it. Brock wasn't even born yet. Oh. Still was at the other house. <laughs> gotcha. Jim Broderick is up next. He tweeted. He said, Hey, I've been a huge fan for a long time. You are a master of tag team wrestling. My question is who in any era, past or present, would you have loved to tag with? Love the show. Uh, Jim, thank you so much. We really appreciate you listening. Mr. Perfect. Oh, there it is. It's an easy one. Kurt Henning. You've, yeah. you've put him over so many times and, uh, and with good reason, big fan of his work. He was that good. He deserves it. Andy Kroll says, wants to know if, is there a guy who, when you first saw Russell, you said, he's not going to make it, but that wrestler actually turned out to be great. Thanks. And love the show. Hmm. I think. The first time I saw Ray Mysterio, and I want to say it was on ECW TV. Okay, yeah, he was there. And he wrestled Psychosis, I want to say. Oh, yeah. But I watched it. I was watching on TV, and I went, this is a 12-year-old kid. How can they let him in the ring? There's no... He's 12 years old because he looked 12 years old. Yeah. Oh, I know. And this tall. And yeah. for the life of me, I could not accept that he was competing in our business on this hardcore television show. Sure. And I just went, somebody's going to kill that guy. Somebody's going to kill that kid. That's a, that's a little kid. Kevin Nash but, tried to, tried to lawn dart him into the side of a trailer. Yeah. Yep, same time they killed me yeah. and killed Sting. Yeah. Sting. Sting and I were in the same ambulance, remember? That was the angle. Yeah. So so Ray Mysterio, and by the way, hasn't he just, just gone on to have an unbelievable career? Yeah, I would say he made me look like a fool. He made it. Ray made everything and he figured out a way to use his entire body to knock a guy down. So it made sense. 
Uh, $20 broke says, hello, Mr. Anderson. First off, I appreciate everything you've done and are doing for wrestling, man. There's a, a lot of love for you. He says, my question, when you invented the spine buster, there were no rehearsals or walkthroughs. How did your opponents know what to do or know what was coming? Thanks again. It literally happened in the ring. I shot a guy off and caught him in a bear hug down low. And I just kind of had him sitting up to where his upper body was like, like above my shoulders. And it was like an epiphany. I swear it was like an epiphany. I didn't come up with this on practice or training or what. I just went, what would happen if I just rotated this and landed on top of him? Mm -hmm. I, I just looked, I said, just go with it. And I literally just hit one on the fly. And it was like an epiphany popped into my head about how to do it. I know that's hard to believe, but it, it that's how quick it all happened for you back in those days. And when it landed, you know, I saw that he wasn't dead and I wasn't dead. It became something that night. Mm. Benjamin Dyer gives you some well-deserved respect here. And he says, why are you such a great wrestler? And yet most people still underrate you. Your moves are top shelf and you're one tough cookie. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I guess because I look like their neighbor. That's what I hear more than anything. You know, really? it's like, he looks like a sixth grade to school teacher and you know, he just looks like a normal guy and it's, you know, in our business, six, one, two fifty is not a monster. That's a mid mid size. Right. I mean, when you got big show walking around and Kane and taker and Vader and you got all these guys walking around, you know, pushing seven feet tall and 400 pounds, and, you know, the road warriors, the Steiners, Steve Williams, think about all the monsters, you know, Haku, all those guys. Oh, big boys. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I just think that once the bell rings, they see that I think Eric Bischoff said it, Arn Anderson has more ways to break more bones than anybody in professional wrestling. I mm -hmm. think he said that one day on a commentary and that's what you had. Once the bell rang, the sixth grade school teacher had rabies. And it kicked in. Right. <laughs> and what did Bobby Heenan say? Didn't he say you were an Olympic wrestler or like you, you should remember that? We watched it a few weeks ago. Could, Arn could wrestle in the Olympics, but then he <laughs> turned around and he said that about somebody else the next week. Right? I know. I know. Oh man. Uh, Johnny Ramdan uh, says, what did Arn and Oli think of the 2020 <clears throat> story on wrestling where Dr. D David Schultz slapped the, piss out of John Stossel for disrespecting the business, man, that was uh you talk about a pop culture moment in time for wrestling. I loved it. Yeah. Loved it. I'm sure Oli loved it too. Oh, I'm sure he loved yeah. it. Yeah. Damn sure. I mean, you're talking about two old timers, you know, that yep. did everything we could do to protect the business and, you know, because once you let the cat out of the bag, it's not the same for the fans. They're the ones that suffer. We think we're doing them a favor. No. Why steal that magic for, from us? We ruined the magic trick. We told, yeah. we, we told, we showed you how we did it. And once you do that, that show that came on TV, the magicians who stooged off all their magic tricks. Remember that was on for a while. Oh yeah. Yeah. Never watched it. No. Why? Remember, I don't want to know. That's right. You know, if they're not smarter than me, why did I just pay 60 bucks a head to take my family to a magic show? And, and I'm as smart yeah. as they are. Yeah. Yeah. We want to go enjoy David Copperfield. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Check. Fern Fernando Diaz is up next and he's interested to know what size Glock Arn Anderson carries around in his GMC Sierra uh, when he's, uh, you know, going around town in that nice big black truck. Uh, I don't take it with me when I ride around at home. There you go. 
If I'm not safe in my own neighborhood, and I know this is stupid to even say because crime is everywhere, but uh, I don't get in the habit of carrying a gun because, you know, the truth of the matter is if shit got hairy, I'd use it. Yeah, I bet. And never yeah, I mean, what choice do you have? And never think twice. We just had, just this week, the smash and grab gimmicks where four guys were over, not too far from, from my house, probably 10 minutes from the house, eight, 10 minutes, pulled their car up right along the jewelry store. Four of them got out, sledgehammers went in, smash and grab. The owner, the crazy thing was the owner finally went to his office after screaming at him and screaming at him to stop. He finally remembered he went and got a handgun and came out with it. And then they left with the loot. Brother, that gun would have been the first thing out of my pocket. Right. And I'd have used it. Yeah. And who would have convicted me? You know, you work your ass off your entire life to try to have something. And in one fell swoop, four, four thugs sit by and knock your windows out of your, your establishment and steal all your goods. Yeah. Who it's gave not, them that right to do that? It's not, it's not right. So, you know, this was a gag, the Glock, but it was real life. You know, if it, if it happened to me and I was in a position to defend myself, make no mistake, I'd never you think twice. You sorry. bet your ass I would. Uh, Tuck says, uh, it's another food question for, for us. Which territory had the best food and why was it Morrell's down the street from TV in Shreveport uh, at Mid-South Wrestling? Did you ever eat at Morrell's? M-U-R-R-E-L-L-S. That sounds like Morrell's. That would be a local establishment probably, wouldn't it? I'm sure. Tuck, Tuck, uh, you can tell Tuck has inside information on that. But was there a territory that you really enjoyed the foods more than another and a place that you were like, we're going there if we're, we're traveling to that territory? Yeah. Baltimore. Uh, Sabatino's Italian shooting Italian restaurant that was open till two or three in the morning. Mm. So after the matches, we could go down to Little Italy, heavy, heavy garlic, Fra Diavolo, the, the big, thick garlic toast with cloves of real garlic on it, um, Clams Casino. We couldn't wait to get there. Sounds like all of you couldn't wait. Oh, we all went in there. I mean, we had dropped hundreds of dollars on food in that place. Because otherwise, it was, what are you going to do, get McDonald's? Yeah. You but they'd stay open for you guys. They love the horsemen. Well, they were open anyway till 2 o'clock, okay. 2 a.m., I think. But, they, yeah, they were. they took care of us. Well, and Terry Weaver, he's in the chat. He's like, tell us more Baltimore restaurants. We have a trip coming up there. So well, Sabatino's is one of them. Jimmy's famous. You got to get to, if you haven't, you know about that one, don't you? Oh, I do. You and I've eaten there together. We did. And I watched you eat more crab cake than any man should be able to. <laughs> What'd you get? What, which one was it? The colossal. The, yeah. The colossal. That was the one pounder. I think. It was live, wasn't it? What a meal. Oh, it, was, it was fantastic. And their uh, crab cake egg rolls, I swear by them to everyone I talked to. Such I mean, they put crab. crab in everything. Oh, it's it, Every dish on the menu, right? It's got some crab in it. As Darren says, the bigger and thicker, the better. Wow. Uh, I guess that's everything there. Wrestling Life 07 wants you to tell us about your pre-match routine. Pre-match routine. Um uh, take about 30 minutes before the match and stretch good. Use the rubber to get a little pump and stretch out. Make sure I break a sweat before I go through the curtain. Same thing every night. Okay. I'd, I'd sit down on a towel on the cement, really stretch my hamstrings and growing out. You know, that's the things, if you neglected them, you'd be sure to pull a growing and buddy, it's painful if you've ever pulled one. 
I have, but not the way you've pulled them in the ring. Talk about, yeah, I, I can imagine it's, uh, it's, it's gotta be intense pain. Avoid that yeah. hamstring yeah. pulls all that. It'll, it'll completely paralyze you in the business. Yeah. Arn, you and Brock are everywhere. On the road, wrestling conventions, autograph shows, making appearances. You have the comic book. You need energy. You need AG1. Just one scoop and it gives you 75 high-quality vitamins and minerals. I'm talking improving your gut health, sleeping better, improved focus. What's not to like? This is a slam dunk. And better yet, you're going to sleep better and recover better. It costs less than $3 a day. It's completely worth the investment in you. And it's received 7,000 plus five-star reviews. Right now is the time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. It's so simple. No need for a million different pills and supplements. And to make it easy, AG1 is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit drinkag1.com forward slash ARN. Again, that's drinkag1.com forward slash ARN to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, Ty Salt 35 says, what was the toughest part when you and Tully went from the NWA to the WWF? Travel. Oh, yeah. We immediately went into 24 days a month, gone. Gone from the house, 24 days a month, home, six. What, what, and I've heard your perspective on it, but Tully was right there with you. Like, was he just as much like, this is awful. Yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't quite as bad because he hadn't had kids yet. Okay. Um, you know, when, when you got a wife, and I'm not, I don't think he was married during that time. I'm almost positive he was not. So he's, when you're a single guy, you can deal with it. Sure. Makes versus, sense. You, got, you know, your young is crying when you're coming home, Dad. You've been gone a oh. long time. You know, it's tough. Yeah. It's the hardest part being away from home. Matthew JWB wants you to tell us if you think Ronnie Garvin is a hall of famer. Oh yeah. hundred percent. The hands of stone, baby. What he brought to the ring every night was he made everybody he worked with credible and better than what they were. And he was just a mat wrestler. Make you believe in a top wrist lock make you believe in a headlock. He'd, he'd, he'd have you put a headlock on him and hang on to it for 10 minutes before he ever got out. And at the end of that 10 minutes, the audience was thundering. And uh, I love, you know, obviously the plan was for Magnum to get the title, right? He loses, they pivot, it goes to, to Ron Garvin. At that time, and even now looking back on it, right call for Ron Garvin to be carrying the big goal? Didn't bother me any because, like I said, he made every guy that was a challenger a competitor. And he made that guy look like he deserved a title shot. That belt looked good around his waist, man, when I was age watching him. Yep. Yeah, hey, there's another one that figured the tan thing out. Tan, yellow tights, had the yeah. hair spiked straight White up. hair, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know. And, and somebody just, you know, they're talking about it too. I'm thinking about the, this is stomp, the Garvin stomp, which Randy Orton, by the way, had his version of it. And I love it. It was almost like a tribute to the Garvin stomp. I was the one showed Randy that love it from my experience with Ron. It was Ron's stuff, but I just showed Randy. I said, here in today's world, this will work for you and showed him what Ronnie did. And, and, and you, and it was straight from Ron Garvin and it was just a coaching moment. And you said, Hey, no one's doing this. Yeah. I think you can do it. With He's retired. Shot. He's out of the business. He's retired. It's, it's all yours, buddy. Mm. And he, you know, he revamped it a little bit. And, but mostly it was Ronnie Garvin stomp. Now the or Orton stomp. Yeah. As the guys are saying in the chat, this is the stuff that we love to learn and love to hear from you. And then this is to me is why I love ask Arn anything. This is as much as I love walking through your career, Arn. Uh, I love these episodes. Uh, Jay Devious asked, 
Was there a song or Arn always wanted to come out to? Uh, I've known this one, but promoter said no. Now you have talked about what your dream song would be. Your your favorite theme song, if you could come out to, wasn't that Molly Hatchet? Flirting with disaster. Flirting with disaster. Was Molly there a Hatchet. song? Yeah, was there a song that you asked about though, and they said no? Uh I want to say I tried to get over the hills and far away Led Zeppelin push through. Okay. But now we're talking about having to pay them a royalty. I tried to get Jimmy Hart to work his magic and get it pushed through. He said, baby, Can't baby, arm baby, don't think I can do that one. Zeppelin going to demand a royalty, going to demand a royalty. All right. I'm going to have to, I want to, ch- I'm going to check that out when we're done recording. And it's, it's, it starts real slow. Okay. So you got to get a minute and a half into it and it really picks up. And that's where I had in my mind, I would start there. Kind of faded into that part. And, come, and yeah, come out you know, it. yeah. Yeah. Obviously you can't have an entrance that long, but. Oh yeah. Mouthpiece Murphy. Arn's a total Zeppelin guy. Big time. Yeah. Uh, Dana Benjamin, would you like to tell us how you felt about Bill Watts's UWF? That's when they went national. Uh, I don't think he needed to expand. He had a nice little deal going with that territory that he had. I mean, he had East Texas. He had obviously Louisiana, the entire state, Mississippi. uh, And he had Little Rock, which was a gold mine. As a fan, Arn, unfortunately, that was the only way that I would have ever heard or gotten anything related to Mid-South was when he became UWF because he was able to get on a TV station out of Philadelphia with that promotion. And that's where I was introduced to, I knew Missing Link in the WWF, but now Missing Link it was their dark journey, was with him then, and uh, and then One Man Gang, Hacksaw, Sting, and Rick Steiner, Hot Stuff International. Uh, Devastation Incorporated, all you know, the Freebirds, all those groups and wrestlers were introduced to me as a fan because of they were on Sunday nights, uh, thanks to UWF. But as far as business decision to do that, obviously didn't work out very well for him because he had to sell it. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad that you got that exposure, and obviously yeah. there was many, many fans like you that got it. When you stretch yourself too thin, ask Jimmy Crockett you're going instead of taking care of your bread and butter when you go out to places and you die on the vine because you don't draw, it doesn't take long to drain your company, which obviously is what happened to Watts. Well, then Crockett bought it for an obscene amount of money, right? And that was the, what would end up being the, what, what kind of hurt Crockett at the end? Yeah, because it was a dead territory. Yeah. We were going in with a new product and it was, the company, or the, you know, that the territory was dead. A domino of bad decisions. Uh, John Ryan wants to hear your Black Bart impersonation. <laughs> I'll tell you what, top second. On oh, Anderson, you think you're a big deal with that fucking fedora hat? This is the real fucking hat right here. Death and Cowboy Hat. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that before. <laughs> that is phenomenal. I love it. Need the glasses right on the end of your no, nose. No, Black Bart's coming back. We're bringing. We got to do the, a Black Bart segment now. That was great. <laughs> oh man, yeah, people are dead. They are dead in the chat. It's hilarious. Uh, Kyle said, what are your thoughts of the NWA having a secondary title in the women's division? So Arn, if you, I know you've been on vacation, the NWA, the current NWA has announced that not only will they have a a world champion, but they're going to bring in a women's TV title. And so Kyle's curious what your thoughts are about adding a secondary outside of their women's heavyweight title outside of their tag title. Now they have a TV title. What do you think of that for the women? Yeah. So two titles for the women. Yeah, world. Uh, they'll have another champion. 
Now they're going to have a TV title. I'm not, uh, I think you, you know, when you only have one champion, I think it makes it a lot more valuable to me. When you start adding titles more to, because here's the deal. A title does not make the talent. The talent makes the title. Yes. I hope we will agree on that. Yeah. And I think if you only concentrate on one, the women's championship versus the men's championship, then you can have a tag title with the men. I think the women only need one, no disrespect to them, but one's plenty. Yeah, there's certain promotions out there, as Terry points out, that have about 40 championships. They almost have one for everybody, but uh, you're right. I think it needs to be special and they need to be worked for. Anthony Flair, no relation, uh, may be trying to stir something up, Arn, because he wants to know who would have won a match between Arn and Robocop? Robocop. Robocop every time. Is that what you're saying? I ran. It was terrible. That was as bad as uh, <laughs> the big stiff, Eligante. Now, if you really want to kill the business in one night, let Robocop go against Eligante. And that and that would do it. That would just end it all. Every wrestling promotion, big and small, would just collapse through the floor all over the world. Over. Done. Yeah. Especially when I saw the size of RoboCop at the Baltimore Starcade, and and and, and, it, and I'm 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 sure the one WCW got was a little taller, but I don't know if you remember at that Starcast, they had a RoboCop walking around Baltimore a few years ago in a costume. Did you remember? Were you was there it for tiny? That? Was it little bitty? Oh, it was little mini mini RoboCop. I do remember. Oh boy, I almost you, went up and blindsided him. Just for Dude, the hell of it. That would have been awesome. That would have gone viral if you would have done that, Arn. You would have been, it would have been everywhere. That's for that shit beforehand. Remember? Oh, yeah. Take uh, that. The SR wants to know if you're still close with Tony Gilliam. No, but uh, but we're friends, but we don't speak because we just, it's more of that t- network. More not just not being around <clears> or seeing <throat> each other. Yeah, he lives in Raleigh. I live in Charlotte. You know, he's, he's, uh, he was a good friend for a long time. All right. And, uh, because you're the founder of the four horsemen, Jamie wants to know who did you think was the best horseman and why? Uh, the best horseman and why? Um, Probably Tully. And only if I say that because he used being a member of that and he knew how to make us important, make us a big deal and how proud he was to be a part of that. He was really good at singing our praises and making us a big deal. Do you... Did Tully back in those days prior to going out or maybe just did, was he almost kind of, I don't want to say a coach, but was he's a guy, was he a guy though, that was like an influencer to how your group should be behind the scenes? He was a good, he taught me on the job. Okay. You know, he didn't need to teach Rick. Ole was not going to budge one, one inch. He had Ole had his thing and that's what he did. And he had his own style. Tully would kind of put the pizzazz and the and the movement and the suckering guys in and catching them from behind and all that. All the the important parts of being a heel. He would teach the Weasley, me the Weasley stuff. The Weasley stuff. He would teach me on the job. Yep. And he taught you that, man. And that's and that and to end. To your point, as we've gone back and watched, oh, here comes the horseman again. You've always said, man, it just did not work when Tully didn't come back. It was magical. It was special. It was, you can't recreate it. Mm. Sometimes firsts should just be, stay the way they are first. And then when it's time to move on, move on. Big Extra, one of our longtime listeners, has a couple questions. Hey, Arn, we know while you were an agent in WWE, you worked mostly with John Cena. I was wondering why you were an agent in WCW. 
Was there a talent that you mostly work with, like you did Cena in WWE? No, it was a different deal because I would, you know, up until the end 96, I was wrestling and I would go to the live events and set up the show and organize the show and still be wrestling a match in probably the last three matches. So it was more an organizer and all that. Uh, when I was with John, it was just John. dedicated. Yeah. Just mm. John, make sure John stuff was right. By the way, we're getting blown up in the chat here saying you have got to be one of the most humble wrestlers of all time because no one's buying who the most important horseman was and that it was not yourself. Okay. They said, we watched it. We were there in real time. It don't work without Arn, and I'm not kissing ass. It just is what it is. So there so you go. So I'll take it. I'll take it then. There you go. Uh, big extra continues. Do you have your name Arn Anderson trademarked? I always wondered if you used your JCP name in the WWF and kept it after you left. So I got it both through, uh, well, since I've been at uh, AEW, I got them both trademarked. Okay, so Arn's Arn, trademarked. Arn Anderson, Brock Anderson's trademarked, and the Four Horsemen. Trademarked. You didn't have to worry about it, though back in the day in the eighties and with you know switching from <laughs> WWF to WCW. No, no. Now, once you went to work for WWE, they changed your name, they changed your identity, and you couldn't be yourself which was, you know, for a guy to have 10 years, say, on television, and he goes to work up there, and all of a sudden his costume's different, his name's different, everything's different. It's a little confusing, but that's so they get all the marketing. Uh, Yambag Jones wants to know if you've trademarked uh, Armed Anderson. No, I'm, Anderson. I am through getting trademarked. Since he's done. He's all trademarked out. It's, it's a pretty expensive. It uh, is expensive. Yes. Yes. I, I'm with you. I understand that. If I can't make a living off of those two, I got that. that on. Then you got problems and you don't. We know you got it made. So there you go. I don't um, know about this, that. You but. do. You, you, you listen. You, uh, the fans that are still clamoring for Arn Anderson, the questions that we get, where's Arn going to be next? What's the next signing? Where's he going to be buddy at, you know, it, it's amazing. The fan base that you still have, they can't wait for your next figures. God bless them. I yeah. can't either. Yeah. Mr. Sibs uh, has a great question or we'll go, uh, we'll wrap, use this as our final one. Do you think there's any stables working today that would you would consider the new horsemen or that are as over with fans now as the horsemen were? No, because they're ever changing. Yes. They're constantly changing. Their guys are out. This guy's in. You never get a chance to settle in and get invested, I think. I mean, got to remember, we ran with that thing for three years with – Four of the of the players, if you count JJ, were pretty much the same. We just had one rotating in and out periodically, and it was after months and months and months. That was part of the formula. It was a constant. Tully, Rick, myself, and JJ were the constant. Then you had another guy that was floating in, floating out, floating in. Arn, this has been phenomenal these last two weeks. And, uh, and I just want to say, too, we've been doing this in front of a live virtual audience, if you will. And the guys and gals that have been here with us, I just want to say thank you because you've helped enhance this experience, hopefully, not only for Arn and I, but for those that have been listening to and watching on YouTube. So uh, I can't say enough to thank you so much for doing this with us the last two weeks, Arn. Oh, it's my pleasure. And, hey, thank you for everybody that tuned in. Did my best to answer them as truthfully as possible. Uh, the only thing that I can answer is what I can't remember, and I'm not going to just make something up. I'd rather just tell you the truth. Yeah, we've had people that have been that have cried at least two or three times. They're completely out of bodily fluid uh, throughout these, uh, and and so the every emotion from laughter to crying has been and all in between has been experienced through these shows. So thank you so much guys. That's it. 
that is the final show of Arn Anderson and Arn for 2023. We want to thank you all so much for being here. Uh, we're going to keep you updated throughout 2024 on Arn's upcoming appearances. Again, Arn is flashing up that amazing all in the family photo from Upper Deck. Arn, they got to make that available to us fans. That's on a nice, well, corrugated. Uh, it, it's not on paper. That, that's nice. The only downside to this, I just realized, is I'm losing my hair. You just, you know what, Arn? Are you sure though? I don't think so. Look at that head. What are they doing? I'm not impressed with that piece of the artwork, Arn. Don't they realize that you you still have? What did Bobby Heenan say? Your melon still has a full head of hair. He, <laughs> oh man, this is so Bobby good. Bobby can be, say whatever he wants. That's right. He was he was the man. I uh, love you all both. We're getting all kinds of great comments, buddy. Guys, we love guys and gals. We love you. Uh, we hope that you have an amazing new year and come back and support the show. Look for some more new, fresh, amazing merch and at Box of Gimmicks. There's two stores, as Arn said at the top. There's the Arn Show store and the Four Horsemen store, and they're loaded with great uh, pieces, and we really hope that you can help support us that way. And uh, again, for those that want to advertise on the show, you can still do that. Advertise with Arn.com. I promise you, we won't turn you away. We look forward to talking about your product. And uh, so check us out, Advertise with Arn. Buddy, back next week uh, with the show, we're back to your career. It's March 1993. You guys want a sneak peek of what we're going to talk about? What do you think, Arn? You want a sneak peek? Yeah. WCW's heading back to Europe for a 10-day tour. It's when Cactus Jack loses part of his ear. You team with Ricky Steamboat on the house shows. And there's rumors all over the place that Hulk Hogan's about to join the company. And we're going to look at the build to a brand new pay-per-view spring stampede i can't wait man it's gonna be a good time should be interesting that's right it's march 1994 i said 93 it is 94 guys this has been an absolute blast on behalf of my tag team partner arn anderson this is paul bromwell arn you got something you want to share nope no okay swerved so, you. you did you swerved I just me. put my pinky up no you did on behalf of Arn, this is Paul Brown. We'll see you right back here next week for March 1994 on Arn. Ready for some great news during the holidays? Just last week, interest rates fell lower than they've been in months. <gasps> this could be your chance to finally pay off all of your high interest rate credit cards and lower your monthly payments by 500 600 700 even $800 a month. But how much can you save? It's free to find out right now at SaveWithConrad.com. And you don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket. And you even get to skip your next two house payments at SaveWithConrad.com.